This morning when you woke up, you likely took a few minutes, got dressed, had a bite to eat, and went on about your day. But for as many as 12.6% of Reno County who suffer from food insecurity, life is not that simple. And our food isn't just a question of how much, but where, when, how, what kind, and will it be enough? As a person who grew up just 20 minutes away, and as a person who was a benefactor of these programs like WIC and SNAP, these people you're about to meet feel more like a family to me, people who I've known my entire life, because they are just like us. And this isn't just about their food, it's about all of us, about what keeps us going, systems of assistance, safety nets, community resources, government assistance programs, and what's on the table, a local documentary about food insecurity. So to better illustrate the needs of our community, we did what any rational person would do. We talked to our community. For this past year, we talked to a group of people who told us they have experienced food insecurity to see. How have their lives changed over the course of this past year? How does access to more generosity, better relationships, and more resources lead to more generosity, more creativity, and more resources? And what can be done about our food? We interviewed them four times between December of 2021 and December of 2022. Between that and some input from community partners, we think you'll learn a bit about the issues surrounding food insecurity in Reno County and beyond. But by now, you've heard enough from me, so let's hear more from our people. Um, so I'm Rebecca Mahoney, and um, I don't know, I'm just me. <laughs> I'm Patrick Mahoney, I'm just a big level teddy bear. Food insecurity for me is deciding if I can pay a bill or food. That's insecurity for me. So um, it's kind of like robbing Peter and Paul. So, you know, I'm going to go out w without food. You know, I'm going to run out in the middle of the week because I have to pay this bill. So that's insecurity for me. My name's Carmen Roberts Agee. I was born and raised in Hutchison. Um, I love my community. I serve on, I have served on several boards in Hutchison, Kansas. Um, and I'm always going to be an advocate for those that can't speak for themselves. Hi, I'm Holly Guest. I'm 39 years old and I live in Reno County in, in Hutchinson. I have two kids. Uh, they're 18 months and three years old. I'm also a disabled combat veteran and a stay-at-home mom. Uh, my name is Ross Kitch, uh, 37 years old. Born and raised here in Hutchinson, Kansas. Went to Hutchinson High School. Uh, did not graduate, but later on got my GED through HCC. I am Jackie, and I have four girls, four daughters. I live now in Reno County, Kansas. Uh, my kids live in California. I left California to come out to Kansas to try to get my life together. And I get my medical and my cash aid, not cash aid, but food stamps. The, the stores are scarce and everyone sees that already. And I think that everyone needs to prepare for that. I'm not eligible for very many resources. And I do help uh, a 25 year old, a 19 year old, an 18 month old. So I really have to think about how I'm going to assist them eating. Since he travels out of town, um, it takes more gas now and he spends more in gas. So when you have to choose between gas and food, <laughs> well, what are you gonna choose? You know, cause he's gotta go to work, so. Um, it's a struggle. I had to call the food bank and I didn't 
know the whole process because I haven't had to use the phone bank in a long time. And um, um, anyway, so I went outside and it took me almost 15 minutes to get through. And luckily I was able to get through, but like my job jumped me about it. And they called me into the office, of course, and I said, I'm tired of eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I said, I was just trying to get my family some food. And I said, you know, I have to make a choice to sit in a chair and be chained to that chair just so I can have a paycheck while I watch my home life burn down, you know, because I have to stay here. And by the time I get off work, everything's closed. I said, I wasn't out there lollygagging. I was trying to get my family fed. Um, food security. I feel because I live in a community type home, my sister and her husband and my ne two of my nephews, um, we all live there, my mom stays there, and so everybody contributes financially um, to, to pay the food bill. Um, but I've seen some of the food bills that my, <laughs> that my sister comes home with and she makes more money and so she, um, there's no way I could afford those kind of food bills. Uh, but I do pitch in and that makes a big difference. Um, I think uh, as far as insecurities go is um, just making sure that everybody gets the kind of nutrition that they need. Uh, I know with me and my kids, uh, my, my, my youngest girl, she still drinks uh, toddler formula, which can get pricey. Um, and then my older sister is on a diet and so to eat healthier, costs a lot more to buy the leaner meats and especially if you're trying to buy organic anything to stay away from the, the harmful things that can be in the food. It's after one thing after another vehicles breaking down and trying to catch up and we're falling down and just not able to get ahead. I mean I'm lucky that I, I have my um, my food stamps, even though it's not enough. <laughs> you try to make ends meet with what you got. I'm hoping that they understand that even though we get help, that it's not enough. It's not enough to make it day by day, especially when you're struggling. I hope they'll understand that we need a little more help than what we're getting. Yet, even with food assistance programs available, there is always a question of whether or not people are actually receiving access to the safety nets that have been put in place. In fact, in some census tracts in Reno County, as many as 20.3% of households who meet financial guidelines for SNAP are not utilizing it currently. Not having a permanent address, uh, um, not being able to follow up with um, some of the uh, the appointments that you have to have, and those are those were basic things. And some people think, oh, not having an address, uh, have, you know, but that's that's a reality for a lot of situations, and in mine in general. And uh, uh, when you start establishing employment, and uh, you make just over the guideline, but Essentially, you're, that's what it takes to, you know, pay your bills, and then, you know, you're still shy on the, on the food part. And I'm going to be completely honest with you. I've I've realized that not having an income is more beneficial than, than, uh, than doing your part and and being even further behind than if you did nothing at all, which is crazy. <laughs> Uh, I can't believe I just said that, but uh, that's a reality of the situation. I'm not eligible for SNAP, and sometimes I think SNAP is a little bit difficult for some people. Um, you don't get any answers. You can't call anybody and ask about an application. Uh, you have to fill out the application online. Uh, that's difficult. Some people do not have um, the capabilities, you know, both 
cognitive and physical, you have to have the equipment to um, get online. So that's a major issue. The state agencies have to be able to help people. And when people can't call, can't get an answer, where do you, where do you go? You just do without. I was going through divorce and um, my children's father was not my ex-husband and um, and the, the support and finances and, and all of those things I think just kind of kept me from initiating the process. Despite barriers, there are elements of local infrastructure in place that are helpful to community members. The Savage Army here in Hutchinson, we actually serve uh, all of Reno County. And so um, some of the services that we provide are rent and uh, emergency assistance, which is rent and utility assistance, um, hygiene, um, uh, items. Uh, we also have showers for the homeless. We've, uh, we've been serving about four times the amount of people per month. Uh, specifically during the summer months, um, I think a large portion of that is due to the increase in uh, electric bills uh, that people are just, just overwhelmed and surprised by. There was an increase, but we didn't expect you to double our, our electric bill. And I, and I know that's my own, um, paying my own electric bill at home. And, and I've spoken to board members that are just like, yeah, me too. I'm Sparkle Fadley. Um, my family's been produce growers for, let's see, it would be six generations. And we have an 80 acre farm that my mom's still working on. We have orchards, we do um, lots of growing. My dad helped um, four other guys create Reno County Farmers Market and back in 1984. And Sheila, it's been a part of that as well. I'm Sheila Korn. Um, I have been in growing vegetables now since 1980 and as Sparkle said her dad got me involved with selling at farmers markets and he was on the steering committee that organized the farmers market but I was on the first board. Um, got to be secretary. And so we started a long time ago and we've just watched this whole industry grow and morph and, and change over the last years. Three years ago, we uh, filled out a bunch of paperwork with the USDA and got to where we could take SNAP benefits, so any food assistance. And then last year we added the Double Up Bucks, which is another USDA program. and. It basically, if you use your food assistance card, it will allow you to double your money up to $25 a week. And the doubling is good only for fruits and vegetables. So the goal is to encourage people to eat a healthier diet, not just a cheap diet. Yeah. According to the state office, for a first year program, she is absolutely blown away by the number of people she sees using this program here in Reno County. There's more people, there's way more of a need. Those just, we don't know how to reach out to those people. Uh, we have a, a food pantry, and so people are able to drop by and get sacks of food. Um, and we've had that since, since I uh, came here. And of course, we understand that that's a very small piece of providing a bit of stability for people. As you begin to start talking about poverty, how to alleviate poverty, uh, you begin to realize what a big adaptive challenge it is. And eventually, uh, there was a group that was formed that started to try and meet. It was a task force. And it was a question of, okay, what steps do we take? I mean, where do we begin? And I can't remember how long we met. It eventually became known as the Poverty Collaborative Task Force. But early on, it was just a, a group of us that met every three to four weeks. And again, trying to figure out, what do we do? Where do we start? And so I would say at, at this point, in some of the work that we do at Grace just from this place, um, 
it's, it's more focused on a bit of the stability piece um, and it's more episodic. And there's still this work of how do we engage in long-term work on something that will always be here. Well, I am Pam Paulson. I'm the horticulture agent here for K-State Research and Extension in Reno County. And one of our programs is the Reno County Extension Master Gardener Volunteer Program. And one of their programs is the Garden for Good at the Hutchinson Correctional Facility at the East Unit. It started in 2011. I um, mean, there were just a group of inmates that they kind of got tired of the institutional food there in the cafeteria and wanted some fresh vegetables. So they approached the deputy warden and asked her if they could start a garden. And luckily her husband was one of our master gardener volunteers. So she asked him to help and he asked me if that could be one of our programs. And it started from there. They donate 10 to 15,000 pounds a year of fresh produce. I know Miss Murdoch at the, the soup kitchen, there have been times where she's gotten more than she can deal with it. She gives that out, but she's also taught people how to prepare that produce so they can not just eat it there, but also take some home and, and um, cook with it or prepare it there. This past year, each of our participants faced different levels of hardship whether that be simply the impacts of a fluctuating economy or a broken leg, varying levels of employment, or simply dealing with the rising cost of groceries. So when presented with gift cards and additional generosity, you might be surprised what many of our participants chose to do with their newfound blessings. Uh, they helped out, not gonna lie. Um, there was a, a family that was in more need than we were, so they got a gift card. So I just, it's one of those things, man. I mean, if it's gifted to us and we find somebody else that needs it more than we do, then here. So that's where one of our gift cards went. So I've been well off to where I've lived literally under a bridge for a few days. That's how homeless I was. So, I mean, I get the struggle, you know, and if I've got canned goods that a church had given me or I've got a full refrigerator and people have nothing, they're definitely getting a gift card. You know, um, whether, you know, good friends, family, whatever, that's just the type of people I am, my wife and I both are. You know, if it means we have to go without in order for you to eat, we, you know, I just feel better about myself, you know. Yes, I have chickens and I actually give my eggs away to people because I see the prices that are, are gone up the store. Um, I get eggs a lot, and so me giving back makes me feel good as well. I know tomorrow morning I'll have an egg in that, in that nesting box. I mean, right now, I have an 18-pack of eggs plus two 12-packs of eggs. I'm producing carton every two days. So if I know I can wake up and reach in there and know that I have an egg, I'm fine. But I have multiple chickens, so I, it produces quite a bit of eggs. So I plant, you know, I share with what I got. And I think as much as people help me, I need to help others as well. So what is on the table? On one hand, what you've seen is that there are many people who struggle with food insecurity. And this is caused by many different factors, whether that be from stagnant wages, increased costs such as fuel, natural resources, or rising costs at the grocery store, or something else. There are so many things going on in our economy that are causing for people to not be able to afford what's on the table. In addition, you've also seen that there are many resources in our community and many avenues of generosity that are helping to make food more attainable. But it may not be enough to make what's on the table last for an entire month. Our hope is that this starts a conversation. And I think this is put best by one of our community partners. I'll let him finish it off. 
A good goal isn't one where you reduce a bad thing, you increase something that's valuable. Well, what's the opposite of poverty? If we're wanting to counteract poverty, what's the opposite? And we eventually came up with this phrase, sufficiency with dignity. And so what we are looking for is not simply to end poverty, we're looking to create sufficiency uh, with dignity for all.